Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Thursday. I can't believe it is. We're closing in on the end of week two already, which is crazy. Um, I know that it was a short week because we had Monday off. So um, it went even quicker than it usually goes. Uh, so I brought you guys in today to kind of have a review of what we talked about on Tuesday session to see where you're at with the plans and give you a more um, kind of a solid breakdown of the way that I view the plans and what I am requiring, what I look for um, to help guide you. I'm I'm at the point now, you know, there there will be a time, especially in weeks three and four, that it's your turn to be the mentor and it's your turn to um an, analyze your classmates' work and give uh strong constructive feedback. But at this time, I hold that role and I'm the mentor and it, it's my job to guide you guys in a direction for success. So when you are planning your presentations this week, I, I'm i asking for you to have several different directions and get all your ideas out on paper. And, and sky's the limit. There, there is no such thing as... Um, an idea that is too big or an idea that is too small. Every single idea holds um, equal weight. And we talked about this on, you know, on Tuesday. There are going to be things, and it might, it might happen this month. It might happen in month three. It might happen all the way in month 23 that you're in. Um, but... We have ideas as we're going through this journey. And there may be ideas that we put aside or we even disregard. But there might be that moment down the line that we go back to them. So um, know that there's a reason for your ideas. There's a reason why it it entered your mind, and um, it may not come into fruition this month, but it may down the line. And I usually use the example that I'm a writer, and I've I've written ever since I can hold a pencil. So if you know anything about being a creative, I mean, whatever medium, if you draw, if you write, if you sing, if you play an instrument, you're, you're always practicing your craft. Um, so as a writer, I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of just scribble, you know? I even have sticky notes and pieces of paper um, index cards, napkins, anything that is in my reach and to write down. So you have those days where, you know, it's, it's pouring outside, there's nothing else that you can do, and you take down that box and you start reading through uh, what you did in, in the past. And you either have those moments like, where the hell was I in my life that I wrote something as dark as this? Or, you know, but something else transpires by it. You know, uh, many times there would be a line or maybe a paragraph or a character that um, comes to life in a different story and, or... Uh, it creates a different poem or, or um, vignette, you know, like something else happens. So um, I want you guys to let go of all those reservations and 
know that this week, these are the plans. It's not your final presentation. Although, you know, you are planning for a final presentation, but know that it's a work in progress. It's something that you are going to subtract from, you're going to add, you're going to throw out, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to edit. Um, and that's all part of the process. So at this point, what I want you guys to do is get all those ideas down. Um, I call it a, a control chaos. So you don't want to be a, a messy to the point where a person reading it, such as myself, can't decipher what you're talking about. However, you want to have uh, different ways to approach or different ways to execute um, the final presentation. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Awesome. So, um, you know, the big idea or the idea of the big idea is you, you, have, you have this message, you have this purpose, you have this why about why you want to do it. And in order to connect with your audience and make them see what you see, do it in a way that you articulate that message and that, that word. So your plans, in essence, are this roadmap. You um, are creating this roadmap for yourself, but not only for yourself, for your audience as well. Just think, if you don't plan for your presentation and you don't have a direction, in which like to go in how do you expect your audience to follow you so it, it's really important that you um you have what's in your head and you're able to translate that to your audience i'm guilty as charged there's sometimes you just get caught up in the moment, hence being caught in the discussion boards this morning. Um, but you get caught up in the moment and you start writing and, and putting things down. Um, and you're so passionate about it. And you're thinking, wow, this sounds great in my head. You know, how this is playing out in my head is fantastic. And then you go ahead and you uh, step away and then you reflect. And when you come back to read what you wrote, it, it's kind of crazy. You, you've left things out. You, um, you, you scattered your ideas all over the place. And they're is that's how it translates to someone else. That's how it translates to your audience. So you want to get into the point where the direction or the story that you have in your head translates into um, a presentation. And that's where I come in. Um, I, have, I have a big task this week especially when it, when it comes to the plans. Um, I feel like the plan is probably, you know, I, of course the final presentation is important, but I feel like the plans are so important because this is what is going to get you in the habit of um, realizing the power that you have as the mentor realizing the skills that you need to articulate your message, um, realizing how to make people move and get them to make a decision. So I'm, I'm a little crazy with my feedback when it comes to the plans, and I'm going to uh, break that down for you in a, in a moment. But this guy right here, and I introduced him on... Um, Tuesday night 
If you have not watched this TED Talk, I highly recommend that you do. Um, I would totally play it in our go-to sessions. However, like any any video kind of lags in a go-to session. So I recommend that you go watch this. Now, Simon, he brings about a concept called the golden circle. And he talks about this in business, but it applies to everything. Um, and it's, it's such, um, I wouldn't say easy structure, but it's very, it's very visible. And it makes so much sense when it comes to um, engaging and captivating your audience and getting them to know exactly what you want from them and what the purpose of you being there and then being there as well. So he breaks this down and he talks, he, he talks about this um, using, throughout his, his presentation, he uses repeatable soundbite. And he, um, he does this in a way that is so effective. He says, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. And um, we all know that repeatable sound bites can get extremely annoying. Um, hence, the Super Bowl commercial uh, monkey puppy baby. <laughs> Just over and over, like in your face, trying to... Um, drill it into your head and it can get annoying um, however it's effective because you are thinking about it even when the commercial is over or even when the presentation is over but the way that Simon does it is he makes this a, a steady thread throughout their entire presentation and he subtly drops it in by making connection to the story that he's telling. Um, so it makes it, it may, it's effective in that way. It correlates to uh, Nancy Duarte's spark line. And um, from week one, when we were talking about that roller coaster, that, uh, that, that taking your audience on a journey of um, what is and what could be throughout the entire presentation. So at pivotal points, he redirects the presentation and connects it back to this, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. So when it comes to the plans and how this connects to the plans and how I look at them is... Your why, how, and what essentially is your beginning, middle, and end that we were talking about in week one. So um, as a breakdown, your why is the reasoning why you do what you do. And I'm seeing this a lot in the discussion boards. So you guys are sharing your inspiration and what inspires you from anyone in the industry or even, you know, motivational speakers. Uh, there's something that you are picking up from them, whether it is a philosophy or it's insight or new knowledge, you're, you are picking up on that and it has resonated with you in some way and, and has impacted the way that you think. Um, so your why is your heart. It's, it's what speaks to you in your heart. It's the reason why you decided you know, full sale is where it's at, and I need to I need to go and pursue this degree, get my education, make connections because I want to be the next Steven Spielberg.
and it's your why that is going to hook your audience in. They want to, they not only do they want to know your why, they want to know why they should care. And I know that sounds harsh, but in reality, that's what it is. We're giving you our time, and time is money, especially in the industry. So why should we care? Why should we be giving you this time to present this idea to us? And um, if you don't believe in what you believe in, how are you going to get them to believe in what you believe in? Does that make sense so far? Yes. Yeah. Hey, so um, usually how I explain this is um, think about that moment, that, that epiphany, that revelation that made you go, wow, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do with my life. You know, it could, it could be as simple as I was sitting in the middle of my living room and Toy Story was on the television. And I watched Buzz Lightyear and, um, oh my God, I just, Buzz Lightyear. <sighs> I just went blank. What's Tom Hanks' character? I just went blank. Woody? Woody! Woody? Oh my god. I need my coffee. We <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> way, way to bring the momentum, Miss P. Um, but, but paint the picture. Paint the picture of that moment. You know, watching those characters come to life on screen. And having that that moment, like that's what I want to do. I wanna, I wanna make children all over the world relate to my characters and feel what I felt at that moment. You know, so you you're you're painting that picture for your audience. You're setting the stage, for the purpose, your purpose, and your message. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, your, your how doesn't really um, divert when it, when it comes to the different choices that I have for my classes. Your how, the best way to do this is when you looked up Full Sail, you were researching um, your degree at www.fullsale.com. Here, you can find all the degrees that Full Sail offers, especially yours. And what that will do is it shows you the track of what your classes will be and what they entail. My recommendation is for you to go on there and research your degree and what you are going to be subjected to um, at your time here at Full Sail. And what this does, and what I hope it does, I, I will share a personal story in a minute, but what I hope this does is makes you excited about your journey and makes you confident that you have all these skills by the time that you graduate. Um, again, it, it really is going to be up to you and what you take advantage of and how much you want to absorb and learn. But knowing what is on the journey ahead of you is invigorating. It's really exciting. And that's where the how comes in. These are your qualifications. Well, you want to be the next Steven Spielberg. Well, what are you doing right now and throughout the entire program in order to make that happen? So in the instructions, and this doesn't divert from um, any of the uh, suggestions that I, I will give you. It says that you will 
be speaking as if you already graduated from Full Sail. So you're a graduate of the computer animation BFA, um, and you now have all these skills under your belt. And you could speak with confidence in having those skills, because right now you are creating this goal and this plan, and it should excite you. I, I can now say that I know Adobe Photoshop, or I know Logic Pro, or I know Final Cut Pro, because I've gone through the program, I took advantage of every opportunity to learn those things, and now I have that skill. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I know it. I know it's intimidating. I know it's you know it gives you a little anxiety. But what I want to happen is what happened to me when I was going through um, the MFA in creative writing. We had an assignment, and it really it 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 wasn't a presentation. But it, it was, they wanted us to research our track in, in um, research all our classes and then come up with um, each month what are the things we will do supplementary to help with that class. Like uh, what Linda tutorials will we go view, what... Um, what seminars, what community service will we do? What books will we read? Stuff like that. Uh, it was it was very interesting to me because um, it set me up for little victories along the way. What really excited me is um, looking at my classes in month eight. There was a class called Writing for Games. It wasn't until I played The Last of Us by Naughty Dog that I even thought that I could have um, a position in a gaming company. That never crossed my mind until I played that game. That game was so immersive in story, it, it was ridiculous and it made me feel and and cry and laugh and it just gave me all the feels so then i'm i'm viewing this course and i'm like oh my goodness i'm getting a chance to, to write something when you look at it and it says you'll be writing um a gaming bible for an idea that you want to pitch I was like, wow, okay. And then by some force of the universe, because I, I follow a lot of different companies on Twitter, um, Telltale Games being one of them and Naughty Dog being the other. But at the same time, I get an alert from Telltale Games that they're looking for a writer for games. I, I, I didn't know what to do. But, of course, I was at the first stage and, you know, as a baby, I couldn't even think about, um, you know, applying for something like that. But I went ahead and I went on the career page and I looked to see what that entails. And one of the things was we want the first chapter of a movie, of, of a game that you would write as a sample and it just excited I'm like oh my god I'm actually gonna have that in my portfolio I'm gonna actually have this skill I'm gonna I'm gonna learn how to do this and I I could submit things and that excited me it got me so motivated to to move forward and that's what I want to see happen for you. Um, have that confidence, have the, uh, you know, 
those that moment that wow I can do this I can apply for this job when I graduate full sail because I will have this skill and I will perfect that skill and I will make sure that I do everything in my power to perfect that skill so when the time comes I can answer that call cool yeah cool and the what, the what is, what ultimately do you want to accomplish by, the, by, giving, by sharing this idea or uh, sharing the presentation? Ultimately, what do you want to accomplish? What can you give them ultimately and what can they do for you to make this happen? Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. It, is, it is the call to action. It's, it, it's what you want to ultimately happen at the end of that presentation. So, my friends, now we'll go through uh, the, different, the different options that you have. Okay? So, on the instructions... The basics are that you are looking at yourself as a graduate of Full Sail University. So you're talking about yourself in the future tense. Okay, that doesn't change. The basic is that you have a company in mind um, that you love to work for in the future. Okay, so this is the easiest track for you to go into. And it's because you, you can use resources to look up a company of, of choice. And that could be, you know, whether you want to work for Pixar or you want to work for Atlantic Records or you want to work for Lionsgate um, or... Uh, Naughty Dog, whatever, whatever the company that's in your field that you wish to work for, my advice is go on that company's website, know what they're about, know what their mission statement is, know what their philosophies are, and when you're planning your presentation, formulate things around how you could fit that mold. You know, how, how does their philosophy uh, speak true to who you are and what you believe and what you want to share with the world? Um, and then go on their career page and look at all the different um, options that you have as a graduate of Full Sail um, and the skills that you will possess. Look at the... Uh, Look at the career choices that you can qualify for. And this is what I call the hire me situation. So I shared with you guys uh, two kind of online um, video resumes. And the first one was uh, Google, please hire me. And the second one was actually a graduate from Full Sail. Um, Crystal, Crystal Timmerman, and you could find those in the announcements, or even if you go back into your email, I sent you links to both of those. Um, so in this situation, you are selling yourself to a company, and you are speaking about all, all the skills and why you would be a good fit for the company, and why should they risk time and energy and money on you. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. The next choice, and um, I offer, the, I offer uh, the next two choices as extra added. Like if you want to, if you want to push yourself, if you have ideas, um, these two are a little bit more um, 
challenging, I will say. Okay, so the first one is a join me. Now in a join me, there's two ways that you could approach this. The first one is that you are a creative, which all of us are. Um, but we know by, by previous discussions that we need each other in order to make something happen. So as example, and I'll use, I'll, I'll use myself as example, you're a writer and you've written a novel, but you feel like this novel and the characters and the story would be awesome if it came to life on the movie screen. However, your writing skills are that of a novel writer and you don't have the know-how or the skill to write scripts. You need to reach out to people and build a team in order to make this happen. So the, the, first, um, the first way that you could approach a join me situation is that you are a creative and want to build a team to make a project happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in essence, you're pitching an idea to a room full of creatives to get to get a script writer, to get um, a musician to write the scores, to get, you know, just a, a team of creative people to make your project happen. The other um, the other angle you can go with with the join me is that you have a cause. You have something that you want to bring to light and you have a cause. Um, but there's a difference in bringing about awareness and education and motivating people to join you. So, yes, bringing about education and, and awareness to a concept, an idea, or, or a cause is part of it, but it goes beyond that. A join me is you ultimately want people to be motivated to either create their own movement or join you in your movement. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So it goes beyond, because uh, I've seen this in the past, where um, some of my students will, will uh, choose the join me situation, and they do an amazing job of uh, bringing awareness to the to the cause or our um, problem, but they don't bring about a solution. Um, and that that doesn't make people move. You have to make people want to move and make a change or, or uh, bring it to their communities and build um, a movement in their communities. So it's one thing to bring about the problem but it's another to bring about um, ideas for a solution. So you create a movement. And the last one is a buy me situation. In a buy me situation, the way that I usually pitch this is these are my students that, that want have their own record label or they want to have their own recording studio or they want to offer a service to others um, or open up their own business, have a production studio. Unfortunately, unless you were, um, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, nobody has the capital to to build an empire we need investors 
So in a buy me situation, you are convincing people, um, investors, to open up their wallets and hand you money. So ultimately, they want to know numbers. They want to know what the risk is, what's at stake, what's in it for them, and what's the return. Um, so what I have done um, ever since we started this, uh, this course is I've made um, a slide deck. And, and it slides of, it's very general, but it's just slides of how to create a pitch and what you should include. Now, it, in every situation, you may or may not use all of them. You know, it depends on your direction. It depends on your message. It depends on your purpose. But it is there if you so choose to do a kind of uh, a pitch situation. It'll give you a visual of how you could break that down. Okay. So um, in, in a buy me situation, you are selling yourself hard. And they want to know ultimately why they should take this huge risk on you. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's pretty much um, what I have for today. Do you guys have any questions, anything that's unclear or, um, you know, any concerns? No, I don't think so. Does that mean that I've done my job? Okay, Amanda, you have your hand up. My main concern is that um, I honestly have no idea where to go with this. With the inspirational thing as well, I, I think I definitely took it quite literally when you said... Um, to find someone in your industry, and I did the assignment before I was able to watch the uh, go through session. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I, I don't know any graphic designers. I didn't even know that this was a thing, to be honest, until my husband enlightened me. And you know, he's like, you know, you like all of this stuff. That's what graphic design is. I'm like, what is that? You know, I literally had to Google it. And so I'm like, yes, that's what I want to do with my life. That is it. But I don't, I don't know anybody who does graphic design. I don't know any, I, like, who on earth is going to hire you? I mean, basically anybody, I guess. But, I mean, I, I don't know um, when it comes to a, you know, hire me kind of situation. I'm not sure where to go with that because I – Although, I mean, I want to do the graphic design, I really don't know, you know, what I would have to bring to a table that I'm not sure where that table's at, if that makes any sense. Yes, and it does. It, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I believe that I was starting to read your discussion board when I, I Kristen um, messaged me and she's like, are we having a go-to session? <laughs> uh, but I know I think you use a designer from New York. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I found I just found someone on YouTube after searching for like twenty minutes, <laughs> and I found someone. And I I mean I like the guy a lot. I mean watching I watched that video more than once. And it's dang long, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy is amazing. You know, it's like I would totally be one of those people who clapped for the shopping bag. I mean, I, he showed it. And I'm like, yes, I love that bag. And it's a shopping bag, for goodness sakes. You know, like that's that's the kind of stuff, like everything that he's talking about that he has done. It's like, I want to do your job, but I don't know where to go with that. Okay. My suggestion, my suggestion would be that you take all, all of that what you just said, like the things that he does that you admire and, and what makes you go yes and get excited and write it all down and okay. come up with 
It sounds like you want to be of service to others. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the only part that's for the assignment that would make any bit of sense to me. It would be like a like a buy me kind of thing. Like I would just provide services for whoever needed it. Right. So think about think of what kind of service that you would like to provide for for your audience or for your customers. And um, my my suggestion would be to pitch an idea for a business that you want to do. And um, I know that you're at the very beginning stages and it's okay. I want you guys not to have anxiety over this that I know that you're at the beginning stages and you probably don't have a lot in a portfolio or things that you've done. However, what you can do at the stage is offer that, like put put samples of things that you've done in the past, even if it's simple, if it's like you created a birthday card for one of your friends or you you designed like uh, a, a a Christmas ornament. You, you get what I'm saying? Like it, it doesn't have to be huge at this point. But think about what kind of things that you have done already and what you would like to do and how you can offer that to others. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. I I just I have like nothing in a portfolio so far because I don't know how to use any of the um, like Adobe or Photoshop or uh, um, my husband showed me like a 101 for PowerPoint for the previous assignment. I mean, I pick it up quickly whenever uh, I have to learn something new. It's just I don't know how to do anything on any of those things that but I, you I mean I you will because <laughs> because you're excited and you have passion and you know what's coming down the pike and the fact that you are already seeking things to learn is is gonna be in your favor. So if you look at it that you go research your degree and you see what's coming up in your courses and maybe check it out. You know, it, even if it's not a lot of time, so it, it's hard for you to really learn, but learn about it. Learn about what you are going to encounter throughout your program and have confidence that you already are displaying the inner strength to you have the desire to learn and and to absorb all of this and uh, put it into place. Um, as far as having a portfolio, it's not it's not required. It's not something that I'm I'm going to be looking for. Obviously, you guys are at ground zero. You're at the very beginning. The reason why I bring up like just little things, you know, like uh, and uh, it, it could be simple as making an invitation or something that you did that that sparked this interest in graphic design. So for the buy me thing, is it kind of like, you know, you expect to to make a business plan like as if you would go into a bank and ask for money to start your own business is that kind of like what the buy me is all about like you're pitching to, to people who have money yes um, so like think, so of, kind of, think of it like um you ever seen shark tank no okay shark tank is on um friday nights i don't I don't always get to see it, but it's a great introduction to um, how how to present a pitch. 
So what it is, is it's a bunch of millionaire billionaires on a panel and these people come in with their product or their service and they pitch their idea, um, persuading them to become investors in their company and grow their company. Uh, so that might be an interesting watch. If you can't watch it on Friday night, it's all over YouTube. You could just put in Shark Tank and a bunch of um, a bunch of videos will come up. All right. And um, I think I still have it. I'll have to look because I um, I got a new computer like two months ago and lost a lot of my old stuff. But um, I may have I may have um, a video for you like a past project that did a business plan um, to give you some ideas. All right. Okay. And I think that that would be my best bet is to go down that route. That's the only thing I'm coming up with any kind of ideas for. <laughs> And know, know, Amanda, that this is the plan. So get just get your ideas out. And again, as I went, as I started this session, there is no too big of an idea or too small of an idea. Get them all out on paper. This way, I can help you have a direction and have a guide. Okay. And that that's, I didn't stress that. I want to stress the fact that what I'm looking for in these plans are detail. Um, and I mentioned that in the email that I sent to you guys and the announcement that I created. Picture this as if, Amanda, you, I'll use your husband because it sounds like he is amazing support for you and wants to help you. Um, yeah. if you were to give your plan to your husband, would he be able to, uh, build a presentation based on what you gave him? And that's what I want you guys to keep in mind. If you were giving this plan to someone in your household, a friend, uh, would they be able to understand what you're trying to convey and what you're trying to build? So as much detail, as much angles that you could provide, the better. Because as your mentor, I can go in, evaluate, and give you direction based on your strengths. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Cool. And again, just take deep breaths. It's the plans. It's only the plans. It's not your final presentation. It's only the plans. This is the first step. Um, and I will be with you the entire way. Uh, if there's things that are left out, I'm going to help you in order to elaborate on that and give you direction. So, um, Kara or Kristen, do you have any questions? No, not at this time. Um, I think I know <clears throat> my focus for it. So I think um, like once I get into it, um, if I have anything, I'll let you know. But I think so far I feel pretty good about it. Yay, that's yeah, good. That makes you. me happy. <laughs> <clears throat> Kara, so your mic come on. Do you have a question? No, I think I, I think I have it um, covered for now. Um, I can't. I came into the session late because I'm at work, but I plan on going back and rewatching uh, once it's back on replay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, at work, especially. Um, yeah. And I'm definitely when we get out of here, I need to get ready and go to the office myself. Um, this month I have the night class on campus, so. Um, oh gosh. Yes, yes. 
but it's been pretty cool. I I was a little worried at first because I'm a morning person, by far a morning person. Um, but it's been been very cool. My campus class is kind of cool. Um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I'm gonna get help. I would love for to make it happen where you guys can come in on uh, week four and watch their live presentations. So I'm working on trying to trying to set that up, um, and I hope it happens. So. But thank you, ladies, for joining me this. Uh, af well, it's not really afternoon, it's still kind of morning, but thank you, and again, I apologize that I was late, I just got really into the discussions, <laughs> and just so you know, if you have any questions at all, you can always message me, email me, or, or call me, um, I'm here to, to answer your questions, okay? Thank you. Enjoy your day, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.